let me just start off by saying this month is looking to be a lot more insane and exciting than I originally thought it was going to be. And today, I'm going to show you something that will hopefully make you as excited as I am. Because it seriously looks like we are moving- no, no, it doesn't look like it anymore. We are getting what I would call next-gen VR. Whether you agree with me or not, you can let me know down in the comment section after I tell you what's happening. So, people in the comment section and on the Discord love to discuss the topic of VR 2.0 or VR 3.0, whichever version you believe we are on now. Some people think the Quest lineup of headsets was more of a 1.5, and some people think that that was VR 2.0. Whatever you believe, the next generation of headsets is here. It's no longer happening sometime soon, it is actually here. Today, we're getting the HTC Vive Flow, a headset that is going to be incredibly light, the form factor is going to be incredibly slim, and yet the specs are going to be quite reasonable, or something that a lot of you are going to dislike, but I'll explain more on that in just a little bit. I actually have known about the Vive Flow since Monday, and I've been keeping it a damn secret. Yes, I actually ended up contacting HTC just for the meme, I didn't think they'd answer, but they did. They answered, they invited me over to a call, and I signed the NDA, so you know I couldn't tell you guys anything, I hope you're proud of me, but I finally got to speak to a big company. But yes, I have all the info for you guys on the HTC Vive Flow. So first of all, we're gonna begin with that, and then I have even more exciting news for you guys. The HTC Vive Flow is an incredibly slim headset, weighing in at only 189 grams. For comparison, here's my phone. And this headset has some pretty damn unique features. Things that I would have loved to see on other headsets, but I just didn't think it was coming anytime soon. For example, it's got adjustable diopter lenses, meaning that it natively supports up to a negative six diopter of focusing power. So essentially, if you're wearing glasses, you will not need to wear them inside this headset. Well, unless you've got a more powerful thing than that, which is fantastic because it means I can stop swapping out lenses if I'm playing with somebody else. And it means I don't need to be worried about my glasses scratching lenses or buying extra prescription lenses for this headset. According to me, with over 50% of the population, I believe, wearing glasses or having some sort of eye dysfunction is what I'm gonna call it. This should be a standard on headsets, and now it really seems to have happened. It's absolutely incredible. The lenses are also pancake lenses, which is a nice upgrade from our current Fresnel lenses, meaning they should have way more clarity and overall just way less, or maybe even non-existent, glare. The headset folds up really nicely, and it fits into that little case that we were showing off all of this week, which really should shows you the form factor of this thing. I actually got to see it through like video camera and it really looks as nice as it does. Also, can I be one of the first people to say this looks sexy? I love the look of this headset. It looks really good. Some people think it makes you look like a bug and it's ugly. I actually think this looks really nice. However, let's go into a little bit of the spec side of things because I believe that's what a lot of you are going to be interested in. Under the hood, the Vive Flow opens new worlds with on-the-go immersion like never before, which is true, because all you need to do is slide it onto your head. No adjustment weird thing on the back needed, no knob, no ruining your hair or anything like that. It has a dual hinge with a soft face gasket that allows it to fold down into a compact footprint for effortless portability. It has an expansive 100 degrees field of view, which might disappoint some of you, but I actually think that's pretty decent. A lot of people on the next generation of VR wanted to see wider field of view, and while I do think that's going to happen, I think that this might just be the beginning of that next generation, if you know what I'm trying to say. So it's got an 100 degrees field of view, with a sharp 3.2K resolution, and a smooth 75 hertz refresh rate. Okay, those two things right there. You gain some, you lose some. 75 hertz. Uh, yeah, not a big fan. But then again, I still play on the Quest 1 sometimes, and that thing has 75 hertz. 3.2K resolution, better than the Quest 1, not quite there with the Quest 2. Still, pretty damn nice if you ask me. I mean, as I said, you gain some, you lose some. You get a really, really nice form factor. Like, this is a form factor we have straight up never seen before. I am unable to tell you what kind of screens there are inside, whether they're micro OLED or anything like that, because during the call with HTC, they were like, do you have any more questions? And I was just like, 
No, because, you know, in that kind of moment, my brain was just like, I couldn't think of anything. That's just the way I work, unfortunately, so I'm very sorry about that, but um, I, I'm unable to tell you that. Hopefully, we'll find out more during today's presentation. Featuring full 3D spatial audio, uh, just like the Oculus Quest 2 with the little headphones on the sides, the Vive Flow delivers immersive sound that can also connect to external Bluetooth earphones, something the Quest can also do, but we know has issues. HTC Vive is also unveiling a special Vive port subscription plan following the launch of the HTC Vive Flow. The plan is priced at $5.99 per month and gives unlimited access to a wide range of immersive apps covering well-being, brain training, productivity, light gaming, and exclusive content like a lo-fi room designed to look and feel like a cozy cafe. Okay, so this is where the fun really begins, or where the kind of trouble begins. The HTC Vive Flow has no controllers. This is something a lot of people are instantly going to say no. This is where a lot of people are going to draw the line and say no. Okay, the 3.2K resolution, the 75Hz refresh rate, I could deal with. And this is something I specifically asked about during the call. Will it have controllers? And the answer is currently no, no controllers. This is, okay, this is where I really want to dig deep into this. It's got two cameras. This is a six off headset, but it does only have two cameras, which means that even if we did have controllers, the headset wouldn't really be able to track them well to the side and off behind. My hope here is that HTC Vive might sometime in the future future release controllers like the new Oculus Quest Pro or whatever it's going to be controllers that we have seen that have cameras built into the controllers because then the controllers could track themselves and then nobody cares how many cameras the headset has they can connect to it just straight up currently your phone is the controller so you've got three DOF controls with kind of a laser pointer and that makes sense it's a media headset but according to me and why i'm so excited for it it can be so much more there's no doubt in my mind that somebody like the virtual desktop developer is going to create virtual desktop for this headset allowing it to connect to steam vr the community of virtual reality is incredibly creative and i can straight up see this headset sometime in the near future connecting to steam vr i can just see it happening and then once that headset does connect to steam vr you can play using index controllers you know using open vr space calibrator you can connect index controllers and just like you can with the oculus quest as for operating system they told me that this thing is kind of like the htc vive focus 3 they kind of built upon that so this is also running some version of android whether there will be ar pass through or whether we will have hand tracking i am uncertain i am unable to tell you that it's not in the press release and it's again something i didn't ask about and i feel really bad about that now also on the htc vive flow you're going to be able to mirror your phone screen to the headset. It is important to note that some phones might not be compatible with this feature, etc, etc, and some apps like Netflix might not allow that because, you know, screen mirroring it with Netflix can sometimes be a little bit weird with protections. That is a cool feature there. But I do feel like we will be able to connect it to Steam VR sometime in the near future, which is really exciting because imagine, you know, sometimes you don't want to go into VR because of that pain of having to set everything up. Imagine just grabbing this thing like a pair of glasses, sliding it on, ow, and you're in VR. How cool is that? The wire on the back? People were speculating. What's that for? Sure, this is a standalone headset. Why does it need a wire? That wire is actually for an external power bank. You can plug it into your phone and use your phone as that power bank, or you can get the HTC Vive power bank. But that's quite literally all that wire is for. And she was like, this is something that I think is really cool. This is something that I could straight up put on on an airplane and launch up a virtual cinema. For some reason, she says she wouldn't necessarily put the Quest on on an airplane. She thinks it's a little bit bulky and still looks a little weird. This she says she would. She would totally immerse herself in content on these glasses, on like an airplane, which is the whole point of this. HTC Vive are marketing it as a media consumption headset for meditation, for relaxation, for watching movies, etc, etc. But according to me, it can be so much more with something like virtual desktop connected to Steam VR. Just the ease of use of this thing could be incredible. I talked about like two videos back, I think, about companies doing split, doing a split of VR headsets for fitness, headsets for media consumption, headsets for PC VR. A lot of people didn't think that was going to happen. A lot of people much more preferred modularity or a lot of people wanted actually specialized controllers instead of VR headset split split controllers instead controllers that you can buy for a specific reason and connect those to the headset really cool but I feel like the HTC Vive Flow could be the beginning of AIOs like this that can do quite a bit more so all in all the conclusion here being I'm quite excited for it 
please let me know what you guys think down below. I know that the lack of controllers is going to kill it for a lot of you, unfortunately. But just for the end here, let me tell you the price. The HTC Vive Flow retails at $499 USD, £499, and starts at €549. Euro. All orders will be available via vive.com forward slash vive dash flow, as well as retailers around the world. Pre-orders start on October 14th globally, and anyone pre-ordering will receive an official Vive Flow carry case and a gift bundle of seven pieces of content. And then the headset will begin shipping sometime in November. Because yes, this thing does come with a bunch of accessories, including that magnetic facial gasket, which I think is really cool, that you can swap out and you can buy more of them in case you want to replace them. It's also fully washable, which is really cool. Again, something you might want to do if you're wearing this thing for a longer time. All in all, I think this is the start of a next generation, but this is not where our story ends. While I was already super excited for the HTC Vive Flow, more info has come out. So first of all, let me just kind of leak this out there, just make sure you guys know, Pimax is also having their event this month. I got an email stating it's going to be on the 25th of October. It's called the Pimax Frontier. What they're releasing, I have no clue yet. I was told that any information they give me, I'm allowed to give you, but I've got no info yet. So I have nothing to give you there, but that's another company joining this month. If you try to tell me this month isn't insane, I don't, I don't know what you are thinking. Firing up Twitter, we can see that HTC Vive has not been the only one working in the background. You can see that Facebook is also working on a headset incredibly similar to the one of HTC Vive. Let me read. Proud of the research Michael Abrish's team is working on at Facebook Reality Labs. Redmond, excited to get an early look at some of the technologies that will underpin the metaverse. We work on several prototype headsets to prove out concepts. This is one of them, kind of. It's a long story. Is that hinting of it's not a prototype anymore? It's actually the headset? It looks very similar to the HTC Vive headset, and it certainly looks like these headsets are now slimmer, lighter, are going to have better panels, and we're going to be able to wear them for a much longer time. Something that a lot of people saw as the next generation of VR. Only thing lacking is that FOV, unless Facebook's done it, we don't know yet. But you can see him here wearing a very similar headset, possibly leaking this, trying to compete with whatever HTC Vive is releasing now. There's no doubt in my mind that Facebook knows what HTC Vive is releasing. So there might be a little bit of friendly, not friendly competition there, who knows? And then another prototype was posted just today, looking very similar, that halo head strap, you know, to that thing we've seen at the very beginning. Very, very interesting, but that is also not all. Firing up my Twitter library, we can see Mark Zuckerberg posted on Facebook, I spent the day with the Facebook Reality Labs research team in Redmond to demo our next generation virtual reality, augmented reality, and artificial intelligence tech. This is one of the early retina resolution prototypes. The future is going to be awesome. So you can see they're prototyping quite a bit there. They're leaking stuff to us. And while the Retina prototype is really cool, for some reason, me, myself, personally, I'm more excited about the slim, small form factor headsets that I can bring anywhere with me that are incredibly portable and that I can just put on and look epic. But yeah, um, that is it for today's video, guys. Uh, we have an event to catch in just a few hours. Uh, so I need to edit this video and then live stream the event with you. So hopefully I see you there and you're gonna see this video after the event. So, you know, we're time traveling here. But all in all, this is all super exciting. And I know a lot of people love to call clickbait on me. First of all, find out the meaning of clickbait because clickbait is actually not something negative. Second of all, I'm excited. I'm super excited. I think this is insane. That's subjective. If you disagree with me, epic, but don't be mean about it. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a fantastic day or night. If you guys liked the video, please leave a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, but would like to join us, make sure to check out our Discord down below, check out our Reddit, where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, we've got sick mugs down below that boost your FPS by 300% and merch that does not put a huge ad on your body. Thank you so much to the Patreon supporting this channel. Your support is helping out the channel so much, seriously, allowing me to buy better gear here, make better videos, and just overall bring the content up a notch. So thank you so much. And if you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel daily, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.